now that we've played around with our legends, our symbology, looking at our data, seeing what's going on, we might say to ourselves, okay, but how do I make a map? How do I make a layout that I can share with people? If you're working with other GIS folks, other people in your class or organization, you might share the project with them. You might export this into a format that they can use, but often you're going to need just a simple graphic representation of what you made, a map. And making that map is not something that is necessarily as easy as just taking a screenshot of, of what's going on, hitting print and, and sending to someone. A map requires some more setup and some more detail. And we'll certainly go through that throughout these walkthroughs throughout the class, but we're gonna do that in a separate view, a separate mode of ArcGIS Pro called layout view. So we're gonna insert a new layout and start playing around there. To insert a layout, we go to the insert tab within the project group, we have new layout. Pretty, pretty simple. Lots of different formats for how that layout's going to look. For most part, for the most part, uh, an eight and a half by 11 is going to serve most of our purposes. And that's pretty much the easiest way to see that. You have portrait and landscape, Maybe you need architectural, maybe you need an ISO layout, everything's in here. Don't like any of those, there's custom sizes. Pretty easy. I'm gonna stick with eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna look at my Massachusetts here real quick. Massachusetts, does it look more portrait or does it look more landscape? I, I think it looks more landscape, so I'm gonna go with this. Your data, your information that you're looking at, will often help you determine what format your layout should look like. So I'm gonna stick with landscape for landscape looking Massachusetts here. When you start inserting a new layout, it looks blank. That's okay. We're going to start by inserting our map frame. We can either choose roughly the scale we were zoomed in at in our last look at the map, where we can choose a default extent. I'm just gonna choose default. I'm gonna draw this. So I have roughly an inch on each side. Let's do something like that. I, I said roughly an inch. Now, as we can see, my default extent is far too big. This is the entire planet in a funky conical projection here, but that's okay. As you can see, my whole map has been brought in with my map frame. So same kind of table of contents here, same kind of pieces. So I wanna see all of Massachusetts in this extent. So I'm going to right click on my towns and zoom to the layer and there we go. So I can fiddle with my symbology, do kind of all the same stuff I want to here. Now I'm seeing it as it might be printed or as it might be exported as a JPEG or something. So there are a lot of features in layout mode. You can dive really deeply into how these things operate. Some of the basics that we need for a map or a north arrow, uh, pick your favorite, like this one. And again, same thing like with the map frame, we pick the thing we wanna add and then we draw it. Good enough for me. Should have a scale, Ooh, look at all those different scale bars. We can go with a metric scale. Click the thing we want to drag or click and drag what we want to place. I actually I don't want it up there. I want it down there. Well, actually I think nestled in this corner would look better. You get the idea. You can place elements, you can organize them and they show up over here on our table of contents. Another thing I can add is a legend, and that's perhaps the most exciting thing. The legends then explain what we're seeing on our map. I definitely wanna know what those stars mean. Definitely wanna know what those dots mean. I'm gonna put it up here. Kind of a non-traditional place for a legend up at the top. That should be okay. Whatever is active in your 
drawing order over here on the left will be active in our legend here. Now, I got to say, at this scale, if I'm looking at the whole state, having the campus JPEG on there really isn't useful. Let's turn that off. Having the Mount Holyoke raster on there isn't really that useful. Let's turn that off. That looks a lot better, a lot simpler of a legend. And now I can actually, you know, fit that a little better. Oh, it's too narrow on the side here. I'll just put it up here in the top. If I change the color of something, say I don't like the color, let's get rid of those roads too. Say I don't like the color of my schools there. Well, I can change the color. Let's change those to red. Hit apply. They changed to red here. They changed to red on my legend. It's all linked. And as long as we have this linked legend here, everything is going to look good. I can dive deeper into the properties of this if I want to with a right click on the legend and then properties. And it gives me a lot of options in terms of the text that I'm using. Maybe I want a bigger font. Gives me options in terms of, you know, say how things are arranged. Really deep dive into how to make this work. We don't need to go into the dark details of how all those things operate right now. Suffice to say, there is a lot of customization options available to you and you can play around with those as you see fit. All of these are adjustable. All of these are changeable. And again, you can play with them either with a right click in properties or when you have something selected, you can choose the tab that pops up along our little ribbon here. So if I want to change my north arrow, I can see that I have some design and some formatting guidelines here and I can change. Oh, actually, I don't like that north arrow. I'm going to go with this one instead. Great. Oh, maybe, maybe I want it to be a different color. Let's go with that. Let's see my scale bar. Uh, maybe it should be a little bit bigger in font. Let's just make it a little bigger. There we go. That's a little easier to see. For my legend, let's see. Uh, maybe I do want to make it a little bigger in size. Let's just increase that font size. That, that looks a lot better. Well, maybe that's too big. You get the idea. When we're done, when we're happy. I guess I need my map needs a title. Let's insert one last thing. Going to insert some text here, just some regular old text. We'll call it my lab one walkthrough map. It's the last thing I need. That font's definitely too small. I'm gonna go up to my text format. Let's make it, oh, I, I like this font. Let's make it bigger, probably 36. You know, it's not the best map I've ever made, but I'll take it. Once I'm done with setting my map up, I should probably save and hit save. Then I might want to share this. And that's what our share tab is for. I can do tons of different sharing. I can print this layout. I can export the layout and export it to JPEG or any other image format. When I hit that button, I'm going to get a JPEG. That's a lot easier to email to someone, especially someone who doesn't know how to use GIS. I can insert a JPEG into a lab document, like you will with all the productions this semester during this class. So lots of different options to create a layout, save that layout, and then share it with whoever needs to have it shared. Lots of fun with layout in ArcPro.